Hey there, Forge Jetsons. I'm sorry to say that today marks the retirement of the phrase Forge Jetsons. We had a heck of a run. It's time for a side quest because look, I've got a problem. Chances are that you might have it too, especially if your background encompasses comic art, digital art, or just trying to get precise lines down in your work. The trenches I have paced in my comfort zone have been dug deep. The tools, the process, the mindset that I use approaching work, along with certain pressures to deliver work of a certain quality to a public face, have calcified certain aspects of my work. Of course, there's nothing wrong with something that's tried and true, but every once in a while, it's incredibly helpful to shake the shackles and lower inhibitions. What I'm trying to fight here, and the things that would make it so that this would be helpful for you too, is one, being overly precise and tight with my drawing, two, being afraid of mistakes and being harmfully perfectionist, and three, trying to make less medium proportion decisions and instead go more extreme with my shapes. So let's take a side quest. For our first star, I'm taking some advice and breaking out the Pentel Pocket Brush Pen. This is a great tool for inking, and one of the primary things that I'm doing through this whole side quest is capping the back of the pen and gripping it from higher up, which makes the thumbnail where the cap is sitting on the pad complete clickbait. From here, I'm utilizing all of the motion of my shoulder and elbow to get much looser, grander strokes, because that loosening up isn't just mental. I'm also messing around with using a black watercolor, also from a water reservoir brush pen, to tone my work. And this loose drawing that was supposed to have a bat nose became an absolutely terrifying clown. All of this and a lot of the stuff from the previous side quest is things that I wouldn't normally share publicly, but that's really the point with a lot of this. And no one should have seen this clown, who now has a single ink tear running down their face. This is too horrible, make it stop. I also tried my hand in reverse with a light tone to indicate really vague gesture, allowing that to dry, and then taking the Pentel pocket brush over top of that, and still loosely indicating a little bit more detail. This is a very similar process to what I'll often use digitally, but it was great to explore it here. As for the tools, don't limit yourself to the specific pocket brush or things that I'm doing here if you're trying this for yourself. Try something really wacky and dip a piece of wood in some paint and use it on the side of a grocery bag. It's really about relinquishing a lot of the control that you have in your normal process and being okay with the results. For our second star, I'm experimenting with the processes, but now with digital tools. I'm gripping the Apple Pencil from the base, using the Sketchboard Pro to get a larger range of motion, and using the VizDev Pencil Brush from the Retro Max Packs. As is the point of side quests in the first place, the result might not be very impressive, but the exercise is interesting and the slightest bit challenging. Both the relative size of the brush and the chiseled shape make it impossible to get precise or add in any detail. This ends up being a nice exercise in breaking you out of thinking that every single detail must be represented within an image. There's something of an art to providing very simple and vague shapes and allowing the mind to fill in certain details. I actually really liked some of the things that I came up with during the second star and how fast they were produced. I barely have enough time-lapse footage to accommodate this commentary. Off screen, I actually have started using this brush in some client work and items for Biko's backpack because the concepts are just made and available to tweak so much faster. For the third star, we're going to start with these new digital tools and gradually bring them into our usual character design process as I design a character. The VizDev pencil really helps me to find big contrasting shapes and new ideas during the concepting phase. The goal here is to create a member of the cast that goes along with Myra from this month's trading card, a mining crew that's stranded on an icy planet. I started with the silhouette of a big, bearded, gruff alien. One of the concepts from that loose visualization stage was a pair of extra arms growing from his cheeks, kind of like prehensile tusks. 
I owe this wacky idea to not being so hemmed in during that early process. I played around with different expressions with these arms, letting them act like horns, standing up if he's angry, wrapping around the back of his head if he's relaxed, and generally letting them hang down when he's not using them. I like that it makes this character a little like someone in a larger mech suit, which likely helps with running mining equipment. He probably doesn't use utensils when he eats, and instead lifts the plate to his neck, and then shovels food in with his smaller hands. In the final render, I made it so the material on his chest where the hands hang has patches of wear compared to the rest of the suit. The motion and distribution of these arms would be difficult if they were traditional human limbs because of the way they wrap against the face when they're upward, but because he's an alien, I think we can get away with the upper arms being jointed like a monkey's prehensile tail or an elephant's trunk, with only the forearms being traditional bone and muscle. Because of the beard and general primate aesthetic, I ended up basing him somewhat on Japanese macaques, with bright pink skin and gray hair. For the personality, I had Paul, Sun, Hyung Lee, and his general demeanor sitting in the back of my head, and the goatee probably came from there. For the render to bring things home, I cleaned things up with my usual oval sketch brush, which I mentioned because the loose and messy start doesn't mean that it has to last to the final image. For the arms, I made sure that the forearms of the head hands are a lighter shade of pink, and the body forearms are a darker shade, just in case they're ever overlapping each other, the difference remains clear. As a direct result of changing up my process and finding a somewhat novel character element with these arms, while this may not be the final iteration of the character, it's certainly one of my favorite personal designs in a long while, which makes me all the more ready to incorporate this thinking and methodology into my work in the future. I've been loving these side quests away from my main bigger projects, and I'm excited at continuing to do them and to keep developing the cast for this particular story if you're interested in seeing more of them. Ultimately, even if you don't end up changing your long-term process, it's so healthy for an artist to stretch and see where new tools or ways of doing things will take you. My course Learn Character Design is available at learncharacterdesign.com. It's over 18 hours of a comprehensive character design curriculum. Even if you don't know how to draw or aren't proficient in drawing, we start you in a place where you can get confident in your ability. There's a new Biko's backpack for April over on patreon.com slash bageldenizen. It's a personal package of new original art that arrives in your mailbox. You can follow me at bageldenizen on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and TikTok. Thanks so much for watching and have fun creating.